Hello, Black Healing Matters family. This is Danielle here at the Black Healing Matters podcast, where we offer you ideas to hopefully move you one step closer to your healing. Happy Tuesday to you. And uh, on this Know Thy History Tuesday, I've decided to um, stick with some Black American history because, I don't know, I'm just feeling very inspired by all that I saw in the U.S., particularly uh, during my stay in Harlem and um, visiting the Schomburg Museum in Harlem. And uh, while, while I was there, uh, while I was at the, the Schomburg in, uh, I think it's on 135th Street in Harlem, I was able to see the Black Panther exhibit, rather the Black Power exhibit, which was largely focused on the Black Panther Party. Well, what was originally known as the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense. So today, I'd like to talk a little bit about the Black Panther Party and give you a little bit of a preview for next week's Know Thy History Tuesday episode. So, what was the Black Panther Party? Who were they? I think, you know, in the modern, you know, 21st century here today, 2018, most people of age don't really know exactly what the Black Panther Party stood for. Unfortunately, all we really have is what pop culture tells us. And I think we're more familiar with their fashion than their actual philosophies, which, you know, is kind of sad because um, many would assert that the Black Panther Party was the most influential political party on American culture, period. Um, So having said that, what do we know about the Black Panther Party? Well, the Black Panther Party was a political organization founded by Bobby Seale and Huey Newton in October of 1966. The party was active in the United States from 1966 until 1982 with international chapters operating in the UK and early early in the 1970s and in Algeria from 1969 until 1972. Now, did you know that? That the Black Panther Party actually had chapters, active chapters in other countries. Hmm. At its inception on October 15, 1966, the Black Panther Party's core practice was its armed citizens patrol to monitor the behavior of officers of the Oakland Police Department and challenged their police brutality in Oakland, California. In 1969, community social programs became a core activity for party members. The Black Panther Party instituted a variety of community social programs, most extensively the free breakfast program for children and community health clinics to address issues like food injustice and sickle cell anemia. The party enrolled the largest number of members and made the greatest impact in the Oakland, San Francisco Bay Area, New York, Chicago, Los Angeles, Seattle, and Philadelphia. So, does that sound like what you've heard from the Black Panther Party? I know for myself, All that I really knew about the Black Panthers growing up was that they were this violent, militant Black group. I was not aware of the scope and their reach, as well as the social impact that they had. Now, moving on from there, the FBI director, J. Edgar Hoover, called the party the greatest threat now. Again, you just heard what they did. The greatest threat to the internal security of the country. And he supervised an extensive counterintelligence program of surveillance 
infiltration, perjury, police harassment, and many other tactics designed to undermine the Panthers leadership. Wow. Incriminate party members, discredit and criminalize the party, and drain the organization of its resources and manpower. The program uh, the program was also accused of assassinating Black Panthers, which, yes, they did. <laughs> uh, so, you know, there was severe repression from the U.S. government, the FBI, the CIA, and on down to local police of Black Panthers across the country. And that severe repression is largely what led to the demise of the Black Panther Party in the end. And so um, I'm not going to get too much, no, too much farther into this because this episode is going to get really long. But I think it is important that we as black people now alive and well today become the torchbearers of our own history. Because what we're seeing now is that when we allow the dominant society to tell our stories and to pass the cultural knowledge of our people from one generation to the next, that certain details, <laughs> important details many times, get omitted or perverted to fit their narrative. And for such a long time, I personally believed that the Black Panther Party was nothing more than really a street gang with style. <laughs> but that couldn't be farthest from the truth. Now, maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm, you know, maybe I was isolated and ill-informed my whole life and sheltered possible. So I'd like to hear from you on this. What do you think? What what was your what is your impression of the Black Panther Party? And I am going to um, play many of your call-ins on next week's episode when we talk a little bit about the legacy of the Black Panther Party. You see, every week on this this podcast, every Tuesday we talk about history. Know Thy History Tuesday. But we also, we, again, those of us alive today, we also have a responsibility to collectively bring together the knowledge and history that we do actually know and possess. And those of us of different ages have access to different parts of history that others of us don't. So as you call in, in, regard, in regards to your knowledge of the Black Panther Party, please do as well include what year you were, you were born or when you, the time we come, kind of when you came of age, as well as where you came up. You know, where were you... Um, socialized, if you will, because I think that makes a difference as far as who, um, what you know about the Black Panther Party. Okay, so how old are you? Uh, kind of when and where did you come up? And what is your perception of the Black Panther Party? What do you actually know about them? What have, um, you know, what have people told you or what's kind of your general feeling about the Black Panther Party and their legacy, the efficacy of what they did? Okay. All right. On that note, Black Killing Matters family, I love you. Stay blessed. Stay connected. Of course, know thy history and let's please share the history that we know, because I promise you, if we do not share this information, then it gets lost with our dead. It dies with us. 
And that I think is the, the, the biggest uh, mistake that we can make as far as informing and shaping our future. Stay blessed. And as always, Black Healing Matters. The podcast you just heard was recorded with Anchor. If you want to make your own, download the Android or iOS app completely free from anchor.fm slash podcast. That's anchor.fm slash podcast.